you should be careful about your relationship with your mother-in-law. These were words casually spoken by a friend before marriage. Honestly, back then, I was so elated about the fact that my marriage was confirmed that I didn't think much about those words. I thought about it only to that extent. The apartment I was considering moving into after marriage was closer to my parents' house, and there was no concern about living with my husband's parents since his brother and his wife were already living with them. I had visited them, and my mother-in-law seemed like an ordinary person with no issues. Well, we weren't deeply involved, so I couldn't say much. Even so, I hadn't thought too deeply about it. I was too happy about marrying someone I am and genuinely thrilled to be with. So, at that time, I still hadn't realized. I never thought my marriage would later turn out that way. My name is Nina, and I am almost 30 years old, working as a nurse. I used to work full-time, but two years ago after giving birth, I switched to part-time and left my child at the hospital's daycare during work hours. On the other hand, my husband, Terry, works for a regular company and seems busy every day. Even with such a busy schedule, he came home early every day when I was pregnant and did the housework. And after I gave birth, he supported me and Terry ways on his days off from work. A kind husband and a cute son. I was really happy every day I spent with them. And then one day, tragedy suddenly struck. Please, calm down and listen. Your father and mother are... The call came suddenly from the hospital. The news was that my own father and mother had died in a car accident while traveling. My parents, who had a good relationship, frequently went on trips together after my father retired at the age of 60. When my father worked at the company, he was very busy, and working on weekends was a given. Although he earned a decent income, he lamented that he couldn't spend much time with my mother. That's why, after retiring, he had vowed to travel a lot, and recently he had kept that promise, leading a happily retired life with my mother. Just the other day, when we went to play with our son, even then he bought toys because our son's birthday is coming up soon, and during our recent trip, he gave us Terry souvenirs saying, Let's all go on a trip together next time. Both my father and mother were looking forward to it. But why does something like this happen? I couldn't easily come to terms with the reality of losing my lovely parents all at once. Inside our home, there are Terry photos of our family and parents together. In my smartphone, there are numerous pictures taken just the other day when we visited my parents, capturing moments with both my parents and my son. Every time I see those pictures, my heart feels tight. Mom? My son, with a concerned expression, peeks at me as I cry. Nina, it seems Ricky is worried about you. My husband says that and gently strokes my head. I'm sorry, Ricky. Mom has to do her best, right? Saying so, I hug my son. After that, I switched over to preparing for the wake and funeral. And in fact, everything was so hectic during that time that I didn't have time to grieve. And the funeral was over in a flash. However, when the busyness subsides, the sorrow wells up suddenly. Every day, I am alone in the bathtub at night and have to suppress the sound of my own voice. Days like that continued in succession. But one day, a man who identified himself as a lawyer called me. We arranged a schedule and I met with that lawyer, visiting his law firm. According to the lawyer, due to my parents' passing, I would inherit the land of our family home, the house itself, and a multi-million dollar inheritance. They had left a notarial deed just in case, apparently prepared for any unforeseen circumstances. My head couldn't catch up with this sudden development, but as various documents were shown to me, I somehow grasped the magnitude of the situation. I felt a warmth in my heart as I realized my parents must have been thinking about the worst-case scenario for a long time, leaving me so much just in case something happened. After returning home, I told my husband about the land and house my father and mother had left. I didn't go into details about the inheritance amount, but I informed him that something had been left behind. In response, my husband said, Well, since we have the opportunity, let's move to your hometown, Nina. We were still living in an apartment at that time, and we had been discussing moving to a slightly larger place considering our child. 
However, both of us were too busy with work to find time for property viewings, so the talk of moving had been postponed. In fact, if it were my parents' house, it wouldn't be too far from my current apartment, and moving there wouldn't be that difficult with my son. Besides, my parents' house had just been remodeled a few years ago. Not quite new, but much nicer. In this way, after consulting with my husband, the three of us as a family decided to move to the hometown where my parents had lived. The move was somewhat challenging because it happened suddenly, but after settling down, we lived an ordinary life for a while. But then, my brother-in-law and his wife, who live with my mother-in-law at my parents-in-law's house, decided to move out. My brother-in-law had been assigned a new responsibility at work due to the company's circumstances, and, despite his grief, he couldn't refuse the move. My brother-in-law's family also has children, and my sister-in-law is a full-time homemaker. Since the children are attached to my brother-in-law, it seems there was no option to live separately as a family. As a result, my mother-in-law ended up living alone in my husband's hometown. Upon learning this, my husband began to express excessive concern about the situation. Mom, are you okay being alone? Until now, it was fine because my brother was there. My mother-in-law was younger than my parents and very active. She used to go out alone regularly, even drove, so there was no need to worry for a while. My husband seemed to be even more worried and concerned than I was. But my easygoing thoughts were short-lived. My mother-in-law slipped on the stairs at home and broke her right leg. When my husband heard about this, he flew to the hospital, even though he was at work. And from then on, he went to the hospital every day for my mother-in-law until she was discharged. He used to come home from work and help me with the housework and spend as much time as possible with her son. However, ever since my mother-in-law started living alone in his parents' house, especially on days off, my husband often went alone to visit her and our family time together as a trio almost disappeared. When I returned from visiting my mother-in-law at the hospital, I said to my husband, You have the day off tomorrow, right? Since I'm also off, how about going on a picnic with Ricky and me? When I made this suggestion, after a long time, my husband, with an intense tone, With my mother in this situation, how can you say such a thing? Do you lack empathy? He said angrily. However, when we actually went to visit my mother-in-law in the hospital with our son, she seemed lively, and there seemed to be no life-threatening condition, so I couldn't help but wonder if it was really necessary for him to visit her every day. Then came the day of my mother-in-law's discharge. My husband cheerfully said, I'll go to pick up my mother from the hospital and have lunch together, and left the house. My son and I had gone shopping together and came home for a nap when we heard a car stop. My husband must have returned. I'm home, he said, and when I opened the door, there stood not only my husband but also my mother-in-law. Huh? Mom? Confused, I stood there, and with a beaming smile, my husband said, Mom will be here for a while. Nice to meet you, Nina. My mother-in-law is smiling as she says so. No, 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 wait. I didn't hear anything. I wasn't even consulted. As I stood there in a daze, thinking this, my husband and mother-in-law went up into the house, both of them excited. Seated deeply on the sofa, she said, Nina, could I have some tea? Oh, Nina, me too. Seeing that, the two started watching TV without even greeting our son. I felt a bit irritated, but considering that my mother-in-law had just been discharged and must be tired, I made tea. That day marked the beginning of my hell. My mother-in-law, whose foot had not yet fully healed, began ordering me to do everything around her. She wanted me to accompany her to the toilet, take care of her bath, and prepare all her meals. What about when I'm at work? I wondered. In response, my mother-in-law would complain to my husband, saying, She's neglecting her mother-in-law. What a terrible daughter-in-law. Then my husband would scold me, saying, Mom went through a lot. Show more consideration. Even if I cooked exactly what she wanted, she'd say, It's too salty. You can't eat this. I'd only take a bite. Or she'd demand, I really want some sweets from that shop. Go buy them right now. And even if I bought them, she'd take a bite and say, 
This isn't it. Making such things a daily occurrence. While taking care of my son and working, I was also forced to handle my mother-in-law's caregiving, and every day left me exhausted. Despite seeing me struggling, my husband showed no signs of helping and instead said, Mom is having a hard time. Don't stress her out too much. I realized that my mother-in-law seemed more important to him than our son. Thinking about it made me feel rather sad. This kind of life went on for several months. Even though my mother-in-law's leg should have already healed, she would say, My leg hurts, and give various orders in front of me. I couldn't endure it anymore, so I said to my husband, Your mother's leg should be healed by now, but she's pretending it still hurts. Say something to her, Terry. When I said that, my husband slapped me. What are you saying? When my mom was going through a tough time, are you still my wife? Don't you want to help your husband's mother? He shouted like that. Even though you're a nurse, you can't even handle such things. Maybe you should quit, huh? When he said that, I couldn't bear it and tears started flowing. It seems that my mother-in-law, aware that my husband supports her, has recently been openly bullying me in front of my husband without any concern. I must have reached various limits, more than I thought, as one day I collapsed during work. Fortunately, since my workplace was a hospital, they immediately conducted tests and administered an intravenous drip. It was determined that the cause was mental and physical exhaustion, so as a precaution, they decided I should stay in the hospital for a day. The doctor who examined me advised, For now, try not to push yourself too hard. I contacted the hospital's child care facility and explained the situation. Since it was unlikely that my husband or mother-in-law could come, I decided to have the night shift staff's children take care of my child until the morning. Then I received a call from my husband. Hey, do you think you're on vacation, Nina? My mom is preparing dinner. Where are you slacking off? I was scolded like that, but I honestly told him that I collapsed at the hospital and had to stay for a day. However, instead of worrying, my husband sighed heavily. You can't even manage your own health. You're a disgrace to nurses. Hurry up and come home. He said that. Beside him, my mother-in-law was making a fuss. Come home and take care of me. A useless wife like you has no time to sleep. That's what she said, and she and my husband continued to insult me. I kind of felt like everything was ridiculous the moment I heard it. Until now, I managed to endure, thinking of them as my husband and mother-in-law, but truly, at this point, I've had enough. I silently ended the call. After that, persistent calls and messages continued to arrive, but I ignored them all, and finally, after a long while, I was able to sleep peacefully by putting my phone on silent mode. The next day, I came home with my son and found my husband and mother-in-law standing in the doorway. You, cut it out already. Ignoring calls, too. Terry shouted at me as soon as he opened his mouth. That's right. You're useless as it is, and now you're skipping a whole day. My mother-in-law, who was with him, followed my husband and complained. Faced with such a husband, I told him, Please, divorce me. Terry and my mother-in-law seemed surprised. Their eyes widened as if they hadn't expected me to say such a thing. I've brought the divorce papers. Please, sign them. Saying so, I handed the divorce papers to my husband. However, it seemed that my husband didn't like the fact that I brought up such a matter. If you really want a divorce, at least bring some money. I've been taking care of you all this time. He grinned and said something like that. Do you think that... If he brought up the subject of money, I would give up. I took an envelope out of my bag and handed it to my husband. My husband's eyes widened as he opened the envelope. Yes, because inside the envelope was $30,000 in cash. Take it and leave now. This is my house. If you don't leave, I will call the police. I said that and my husband and my mother-in-law turned pale and left. Of course, I made them fill out the divorce papers. With this, the story of my husband and mother-in-law comes to an end. However, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Those two need to make amends for their actions from now until the end. After that, 
I consulted the lawyer I had used before regarding my parents' inheritance. I claimed compensation from my husband and mother-in-law, including child support from my husband. I had recorded the abusive language that my husband and my mother-in-law had used towards the end, planning to use it in case of need for a divorce. I had endured until then, because I didn't want to take away a father from my son. However, upon reflection, I felt that a man like my ex-husband was more pitiable. As a result, the compensation for my ex-husband and my mother-in-law amounted to approximately $50,000. In addition, since there is child support for my son, my ex-husband will have to continue paying me regularly in the future. The $30,000 I had given them was spent on a trip right after they left home, and they could not pay the $50,000 bill in one lump sum. So, they had to go into debt. If they had kept the $30,000 I mentioned instead of spending it, the alimony wouldn't have been so large. I realized that those two are truly and genuinely foolish. It seems they are burdened with debt, and the story has spread to neighbors, and even my brother-in-law and his wife. Now, they are so confused that they can't even walk outside. Truly, there is no salvation for such people. On the other hand, to sever ties with my ex-husband and his family, I returned to my parents' home. I quit the hospital where I had been working and started a new life with my son in a peaceful countryside. My son seemed to sense, even as a child, that I had been hurt by my ex-husband and his mother, and I think my son has been smiling more and more since we started living together. I will protect this smile for the rest of my life. I made that vow in my heart.